Well, hello, Shell Buddies, and welcome back to the channel. Today is Monday the 15th, and I am just now starting to do the editing for the Finn Finds Five. Five different beaches, two different days, and amazing, incredible shelling at all of them. But uh, for our first video here for the Finn Finds Five, we are going to go ahead and check out Lido Key. You will not believe the J John found. So Lido Key is the first secret I'm revealing on all the crazy finds that we got. We got a Genonia at South Lido Key Beach Park. So let's go take a look, see what other awesome stuff that we see out there. Good chilly morning from Lido Key. We are just on the heels of another monster winter storm. It's about, what's the thing say babe, 52 degrees? Mm -hmm. A little bit of a wind going. And we're back at South Lido Key Beach Park to see what else has been brought in. And I'm getting a shot of the parking lot so that you can see even two days after this parking lot is full of water. So once again, Lido is inundated and uh, the pile should be changed around once again. So we're gonna head to where we've been coming on the beach at over here by the this resort over here. We cut through the beach over on this side. It's the big cones, the big, all the good ones. In the middle on the sand? No. Or by the water? That's where I found the big ones, but the, at the edge, edge, directly out. No. Gotcha. All right, so thanks. <laughs> well, tips from another sheller who was leaving the beach with enormous whelks. <laughs> sounds like it. But it also sounds like we shouldn't be worried just about the water line rack, but about the storm rack, the high rack line. When you get water that's three feet higher than it's supposed to be for high tide. Look at the surf. Look at the sand. I mean, look at the sand. This looks a lot different. First of all, the approach to the water seems much shorter. And something got carved over here, John, I think. Yeah. Oh my. Oh yeah. Oh boy. And everybody's on the point. Well, we know from the last three storms that up here by the rocks has been fantastic, just as well as the point has. And the shells are everywhere on this sand. They groomed it, but it looks like it's rained since they did last groom it. Oh, hey, there's a bunch of sand missing. Oh, goodness. Just judging from looking at this, not only was this over top, but it was carved up and some sand's been transported around. Like I said last time I was here. Oh gosh. Uh, there's an enormous shell pile over there. Okay, there's a, about a, what is this? About a foot and a half drop. All right, hold the front of the walker. Ooh. Whoa! I got you. Okay. Well, it's fragile. Gave away right under my foot. So, watch your footing down here. Now, like the last few times, wow. the beach is fairly carpeted. Shells look like they've been moved around. Nice conch, babe. Look at that olive right by you. Yep. Oh, that's nice too. Wow, super gloss. And still wet. And we're about a half an hour away from low tide proper. Oh, is this one alive? Oh, buddy, are you cold? 
Hi. I'm gonna hold you in my hands and warm you up. Oh, poor little friend. Water temperature is in fact warmer than the air. So that's where we're gonna send this little cutie pie. Well, hello. Good morning. Oh, hello. Yes, I'm taking you to the water, my friend. Let's go. This guy's perky, babe. He was swinging away at me. <coughs> that one's alive, too. Yep. Oh, I don't want to get wet. It's cold. Ah. Okay. There we go, little friend. The air temperature being 52, the water temperature being, I think, 63 or 4 for the Gulf, they said yesterday. Definitely, things are starting to cool off. Some good signs. A piece of apple Mirax there. Wow. Big fossil. Look at that guy. That's an old fossil crown conch. Nice. And ooh. Oh, I hear my name. Hey, Arlene, how are you? Good to see you again. Yeah. If you watched my last video, you were in it. <laughs> no, I, I didn't get on there yet. This is going to be on there, right? Yeah, um, yeah, I uploaded um, a few days ago. We got here at 10 till 7, walked out here, and some guy found it. Or a scotch bonnet right up in here. There's a lady that just passed us on the way out to the parking lot with two full shopping bags of like enormous whelks and all kinds of stuff. Oh, she got here. Yep, we should have came early. Well, we we oh, got up early to that come. That's, it's, that's a big, big sand dollar. Oh my God. Is it still alive? No. It's got that. Can... Oh no, it's got a big hole blown out in it. Wow, that guy was a beast. He was. I don't want it. I'm not going to keep it. Yeah, he's in tough shape. Well, we saw that rock pile, so that's where I'm headed to. But this yeah. has carved up quite a bit since the last time I was here, too. Yeah, here. Have a good day. You too. Have fun. So, live fighting conks all over the place. A lot of hinged stuff, hinged arcs, actually, which is kind of a surprise. Smaller versions of the giant Atlantic cockles. There. There and there, those guys representing and ooh, look at that. That is a smooth duck clam. Relatively fragile shell. Happy to find those in one piece always. And since it is a little bit fragile, that one's gonna go in with the tinies. All right, I am making my way away from the water. There's loads of fighting conks, loads and loads. And I'm coming up here at this first stretch of rocks. You can probably tell from the last video to this one. About a foot and a half of sand has been pulled out of there, it looks like, as far as thickness. Oh, wow, look at this moon. Look at this guy. Whoa. Packed full of sand here. That guy is a beauty. Boy, oh boy. Right on. little calico clam up the hill here. Did you find any amazing ones? Not yet, but I've only been here a few minutes. Okay. <laughs> you do. All right. On the top of this hill now. I got a two point. What do you got? Ready? Uh-huh. <laughs> calico clam with an olive in it. <laughs> yeah, that'll come off. Oh, yeah. Cool. Look at this shell pile over here. Oh, hey, there's an apple murex at my feet. Hello, little apple murex. This is wild again and different again. It's all different. 
All right, last time you and I were here together, I found gaudy nauticas between here and the other set of rocks. There's fighting conks everywhere. It's broken, but look at that. Oh, it's too bad it's broken. That one's pretty. There's a long skirt. Another big fat olive. One of the things we find out here at Lido. Big monster olives. Okay, I'm standing on a shell pile that feels like it's a couple feet thick. So all of this pushed up. Oh, that is pretty. Put that one in the bag, baby. Look at this, in the rocks. Everything is all in this pile of rocks from this top side. So yeah, this is a good couple of feet thick, wow. Let's just for fun. See how far. I mean, I'm down a good six, seven inches now. So if you want to sit on a pile and pot, this is a great spot. A lot of stuff got broken and battered, it looks like. What if we here? There's a lovely bay scallop. And I see a yellow prickly cockle over here. A little yellow prickly cockle. You're pretty. Wow. Really old beat up comb. Look at that. That's an old, a very old alphabet comb. We'll do an experiment with this guy though. We're gonna put it under a black light and see what happens. Sometimes when you do that with your older shells, you can see a pattern that uh, pops out when the black light's on it. And I'm just sort of surveying here. There sure is a lot of stuff. So, there was a big pile between these sets of rocks, but John's saying there's nothing that direction. So, we're gonna turn it around and head south to the point. But I think I wanna grab that lightning bolt first. Well, I don't know, do I? <laughs> that one's in terrible shape. All right, we'll leave that here. I just spotted an egg cockle. An egg cockle. Oh, wow. A nice one. Cool. Well, look, there's a little baby whelk. Hi, tiny whelk. Oh, and a moon right by it. Oh, just the top off of it. Blown out. Nice. If we dug in this, we'd probably find some good stuff, but... It's too cold to sit in one spot today, I think. But boy, this stuff sure did get scattered around and pushed up onto the beach. Wow. Amazing. Babe, is that a big pile over there on that little jutting point out? Uh -huh. Well, let's head there next. That looks fun. <laughs> looks good. John got a tulip. He's cracked, but he's got a chip on him. That's okay. Full of sand. We'll take it. Sure, you can put it in your bag. <laughs> I don't mind. They all end up in. They all end up in the same bag anyway. Just don't make a habit out of it. Okay. <laughs> what have we here? Another little live guy. Hello, friend. Look at that. Nobody wanted to pick him up. Take that off the beach. Oh, crusty whelk. Yeah, I can clean that. Look at that little hinged tiny spiny. Yep. Isn't that darling? Oh my gosh. And it's attached to a hinged arc. Okay, that's cool. That's neat. Boy, we thought one of them in the hot finish. Oh wow, paper fig. How much is there of it? Not much. Well, about half of it. Watch out, water. Ooh. It's 
So we're trying to stay out of the water today. The water actually feels warmer than the air. Oh boy. Piece of a moon there. There's a button and a moon and a sailor's ear. What is, oh, that's another sailor's ear all full of sand. There's another one. Hmm. Oh, and look at that, I almost missed that one. Cute little juvenile fighting conch all covered in barnacles. Those will all come off of there. Right on. I know he looks gross, but he'll clean up nice. Oh boy. We've got hinged scallops with critters still in them too. Some really colorful spiny jewel boxes. All closed up, still alive. Wow. So a different type of shelling again out here. Right at the same beach that we keep coming to. Things change constantly down here. And, well, the shells are in and the word is out. So, a lot of folks have been coming down here to shell too. You can see quite a few people out here on the beach today. Hey, another one of those fossil crowns. I got one of those in kind of like a black almost. I don't know if this is washing in or washing out of this sand that's getting eroded. What's this? Oh look! Crab. It's the back of a crab. <laughs> Significant changes to Lido Key with how much has washed away from these rock jetties. I think a sandbar has formed offshore where all of this is breaking. There's a line I can see that goes way above the jetties and just breaks right here consistently. So some of the sand that was here is now there. As for the top of the rack, Clearly the water washed over the top of this dune and this line would be last night's line right here and that would be storm line all that little dark area up there it doesn't look like it's been really too awfully groomed since the big storm we had two days ago lots of stuff over there by the water now the beach is less wide because of all of that stuff washing out and flattening out this top flat spot is actually smaller now now since this little storm cycle pattern that we started started it seems to me since Adalia that long or I'm sorry I keep saying longboat <laughs> Lido Key has grown it's gotten further going this way and a little bit at the bottom but yet this top part seems smaller I would imagine at some point a separate little thing may form but yeah the conditions are quiet now a lot quieter than yesterday and all of those waves breaking out there where they really weren't before, that's where all the sand went, right out there. So I'm still up on the top of the dune. Don's down by the water. And it doesn't look like anybody really shelled over here where I'm at. Not a lot of footprints or dig holes. But yeah, look, everything that was on the surf line washed over the top of where the dune was and all pushed up to here. So this is all full of shells, scattered all over the place. And you can see further down where it kind of swings around and then there's another pile of grass there. So that's where the water levels were at. Oh, it's a piece of a heart biscuit, babe. Yeah, One of those heart urchins. That's cool. It does. That's pretty amazing. That's what the inside of those look like. 
type of urchin. They call it a heart urchin. People call them sea biscuits or sea potatoes. You see a nice sunray Venus clam over there. Let's see if I can get it without getting wet. And look at that drill hole in the back of it. That's cool. Get up here so I don't get hit with the waves. Yeah, that's got a, an angled drill hole. Maybe from a moon snail. They do a beveled hole like that. Here's another one of those little hard urchins. Man, up on top of the dune, where a lot of the sand got washed around, and um, everything's kind of squishy as far as under my feet. So quite a bit got washed around up here. And now we can get a better look at uh, Last night's high line is right here. The storm rack is kind of over there. Bunch of stuff looks to be washed up over on the bay side as well. It'd be interesting to get over there. There's a lot of people here today. There's at least I don't know, 25 people here shelling right now. So it's not as quiet as I usually like it for this early in the morning since we did get here at sunrise. But with a storm like that, and folks here visiting for the winter, we have a lot of folks coming to shell. Ooh, that's pretty. It's just a crossbarred Venus, it's nothing too fancy, but look at the pretty color on the inside, and how nice the markings are on the outside. That's lovely. Now, something is um, making me very stuffed up out here today. Not only the ocean clears my sinuses a little bit, but Right after a storm sometimes, not so much. Here. A pretty little fighting conch. I'm missing his tip. I will leave you here today, buddy. Got quite a lot of those the last few weeks here. That guy's pretty. Big bay scallop. Take that. Now because there's so many people, there's a lot of competition. And people did get here before us and we're leaving the beach with bags of stuff. So pro tip for South Lido Beach, the early birds get the worm, so to speak. Or in our case, the shellers, the early birds get the whelks. John's still over by the water, but I don't see him bending over and picking up a lot of stuff. I presume that means everything is up here at the point. So that's where we're headed. And you can see a lot of people over there shelling too. Nice chunk of coral. That's cool. It's cool. You can see the inside, the polyps. That's neat. Ooh, I like that. Okay, now we're talking. Here's where stuff all is. In the water, here at the bottom of the point. Which I say still, but the point is getting longer and the beach is getting narrower. Like it's stretching it out. Boy, this guy's in tough shape. <laughs> All right, the sand dollar with a whole little ecosystem of these little flat oysters on here. They're just going to leave that right there. And there's a bunch of stuff at the water's edge. People are digging like crazy. Oh my gosh, this has completely changed. No, ma'am, it was way top. Uh, young girl that we met last She's got a great big old wealth over there. She had a whole hole. big bag full. She was so excited. Wow. No, I didn't. Oh gosh, that's a nice one. This had been all flattened out and you could walk this. Now this is all carved and deep again and it's all different. It changes. That That's like three times in a week it's changed. Yeah. That's nuts. I said if somebody found it, no. A couple of weeks ago, somebody found a live one here and kept it. And I'll, yeah, not good. What was it? A J. Janonia. Look, there's a nutmeg and a little juvenile fighting conch. 
Most of the moon. With this being such a steep drop off, it's a little tough for me to show on this end right now. I do see a very nice moon snail I would like. And a gorgeous white and concrete there in the water. A juvenile one with yellow I love. All right. Ooh. Where'd it go? There. There. Look at that. Look at this cute little guy. There's some big olives in here. Wow. Not very stable for footing. Look at them. Olives. Ooh, this is such a steep drop off. Gosh. Look at the size of these olives. Golly. <laughs> Yeah, look, there's a little apple murex finally. Nice. Good little shells right here. This is so sketchy though, the way this is piled up on this edge and it drops like this. This was so flat a few days ago. Craziest, craziest changes. Man, man. All right, so we're at about dead low, I think, tide-wise. This is crazy pants. Very. Right, Michelle? I've gotten my feet wet a couple times this morning and the water is much warmer than the air, so it's not bad until you step out, actually. <laughs> I just cannot get over how much this has changed. Good gosh. A couple of days ago, this was all flat, and all this stuff that's on the water was all up here on the beach. Ah. But this point keeps growing this direction. Oh, so things just keep coming down this way, and the beach is getting narrower. All right, I would love to be able to paw through this and get in that water, but if we're at low tide and they're still looking like this, I'm not sure that's really safe for me at least. Cause that's a good 16 inch drop right here to get to that little shelf and the water drops off drastically. But I will stand up here on the edge and just sort of flick through things and see what happens. This is where I probably should have brought my rake or shovel but I didn't know everything was gonna be piled up like this in one spot. Here's where things get really sketchy. All right, this edge line that people are working in. Oh my gosh, there's a beautiful walk in there. Wow. Oh, what a shame. Too bad, his colors were great. See how this is eroding? Like it's undercutting? So you have to be even more careful when that's happening. Now there's a little bit of a wider spot for me to step onto because of that. So let's see what this is about. Oh gosh, I don't like this. this is, everything's sliding out from under my feet. It's making me nervous. Because I am not want to get in that water. Nope. Nope, no oh, thank you. Sketchy, very sketchy. Well, babe, everything we wanted to look through was all on a pile and in the water, I guess. What did you find? Another one. Oh, another piece of the little hard urchins. Cool. Okay, this is going to be a first for me to say. What? It never disappoints, but today it's kind of disappointing. Well, the way everything is piled up, it's... Um, buried. It's buried. And... For me, safety-wise, this is not safe. Oh, uh, there ain't no way I'm getting down there. I mean, I was 
it was so flattened out and there was a nice little gradual into the water and now it now it out. drops straight down yeah actually as a matter of fact i was just thinking let's uh we'll go around and get to the car and then go uh go to longboat there's a nice pale sunry venus that's really pretty nice light color i like that look it's a sand dollar a nice one wow he's not all disgusting he's just got a little chip out of him i do not mind that cool my nose will not stop running oh gosh look at those colors isn't that beautiful he's a little broken on the bottom but i don't care that's gorgeous i have really pretty earrings All right, so this little pile I'm standing on actually appears to be kind of thick. So many scallops and surf clams. Gosh. And a lot of this stuff today too. A lot of stuff really darkly colored. And the low oxygen sediment discoloration. You can see all of these are all discolored by that. A boatload of stuff to look at. What a cute little teeny scallop. That's pretty. And I see a nice white one in there. It's pretty too. Oh, where'd it go? There. That's lovely. Super pretty. this one a little dark colored one and that is a little baby true tulip you know he's got a hole in him and I don't mind that because that's just darling a really nice yellow cockle there wow there's some more yellow that jumped out nice buttercup lucine no clue what that is but I like the discoloration that's cool Nice big base scallop there. Gosh. So people that are spending the time and digging around and getting in that edge are finding some good stuff. And look at this. A lucky limpet. I love keyhole limpets. I call them lucky. Every time I find them, I find other cool stuff around with them. So I love these little guys. To me, they're an indicator that just shell is very good. Some crazy stuff in here. John's further ahead of me. Just kind of checking out the water's edge. I'm gonna look in here for a couple more minutes, then catch up with him. Another nice yellow prickly cockle. And this color orange caught my eye from that scallop there. It is a little chipped on the edge, it's not perfect, but that color is beautiful. So I will cut that and make something fun out of it. Oh gosh, is that a tulip? It is a tulip. Hello tulip. I'll take you too. Very nice. And up here, is one of the rough scallops. You can tell it's kind of stretched out this way. And look at this little teeny teeny tiny one. That's sweet. <laughs> so pretty. My goodness. Alright, I wish it whatever's here wasn't making my nose run so bad, but every time I bet. Okay, see where John is back there? That's gonna be important in a minute. <laughs> Get stuffed up again. So once again. An impressive pile of shells here, Lido Key. Lots to go through and dig through. Lots of competition for it though too, because there's a lot of people here. However, I think as I've proven to you in the past, and again today, doesn't matter how many people are out here, it's if it's this much stuff, just get in there and look. Here's some more. Hello, Lace Murex. And hello, 
Apple Murex. Ooh, Apple Murex is alive. He is. He's holding on to that shell. All right, we'll leave you alone, pal. You're content there. I'm going to leave you be. We'll take your friend, though. He is beautiful. Look at the edge on that. Gosh, it's perfect. Nice, Lace Murex. Hey, is that a moon? Hey, there's a moon snail right there, too. And a piece of coral. Awesome. Oh, a little tiny buttercup lucene. That's adorable. And might I just add that I'm seeing where somebody's already looked. So that's what I mean by there's always stuff here. Get closer down and look at everything and you'll find stuff. A lot of surf clams, gosh. Is that an egg cockle? It is. And a nice one too. Beautiful. Really nice egg cockle. Alright. So up in these higher lines, I'm having a little better luck than I was having on the water's edge. Baby moon. Oh, broken moon. Oh, there's a cool worm snail. Yep, we'll take that too. Yeah, John's calling me over for something. I bet he found a pile of stuff he wants me to look at. Either that or he wants to go. Yes, what? what? <gasps> no way, John! Shut up! <laughs> Where was it? Right up there. Is that where we're going to? Okay, honey. That's awesome. John is finally in the Genonia Club. How fantastic. That's the only bad part. Oh, there's somebody's vape pen. That way. It's a little bit surf worn, but so what? It is whole. It is complete. It does not have any uh, dings other than teeny little bit at the tip. I mean, this is a nice one, John. This is a really just, nice one. I was just walking and I saw the color and I said, oh my God, no way. Shut up. Yes, I am part of the club. Welcome to the club, my love. <laughs> That's fantastic. You have arrived. In this weird rack? All of it, yeah. And it was just laying right there. No doubt. So Lido produces another Genonia. been talk of a few people finding them ever since Christmas here and there once in a while people are saying oh we found one they found one oh wow look at the size of this guy too bad he's got a hole but I uh, know I got a that's a beast one. I got a half of one it's beautiful Color is there's a lot of sand dollars I'm excited for you that's awesome It doesn't seem like as many people are looking over this way either. So was it here or down by the water? Great find. You're going to be on the moon all day from that. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Lido Key is right. So this, everything is just shifted around here. And there's stuff over here in the bay again. Yeah. There wasn't all this the last few weeks. Everything was on the front side. Oh, look at this guy. You know, it's really funny. Wow, that's nice. Nice egg cockle, that's a beauty. That woman that was walking over here, she was all over here and she didn't even Ooh, see. is that another? I didn't Ah, it is. It's another egg cockle. Look at this one. That one's pretty too. Yeah. 
All right, so we're away from where everybody is shelling. We're actually having a little better luck. There's a ton of really cool stuff. All right, I want to look by the water since nobody's looking over here too. Well, we may not be going a long boat after all. John's on a Genonia high, so am I. That's awesome. So incredible. All right, so there's a weird little rack and shelf. So stuff got pushed over the flat and the dune back onto this side because there was no shells here at all. None. But look at what's happening now. A big bunch of sand got piled in. Now the waves are lapping it and undercutting it and they will smooth this back out. So there won't be much of a chance to smooth out between now and the next storm we have coming in. We are on what looks to be a conveyor belt of storms coming in twice a week right now. And what that does is it brings in shells. We've been to Lido a number of times since uh, just before Christmas. Oh, nice. Found some really, really cool stuff out here. And lots of it. I mean, the shelling here at Lido is the best I've seen it in quite a long time. I feel like the rain is coming and it's gonna be here soon. Aw, broken tip off a tulip. There's a really nice buttery buttercup they seen. How pretty. And look at the pattern on that. Now, I'm not a big fan of slipper snails other than the eastern white and the spotted. I like those for some reason. The rest of them are sort of plain. But that is kind of pretty with the stripes. There's a pretty pink coquina. And then there's another one of those guys. Another little buttercup lucine. And a semele, a white Atlantic semele. Nice. I love these white Atlantic semeles. The pink or a peach up in the top corner. And they're a thin shell, relatively see-through. You can kind of see my finger through it. Beautiful example. Ah, look at that little tiny guy. Hey, there's a nice sand dollar. What's that? Oh, there's shells. There are, but everything is on a steep drop and it's really... Re it, yeah, and it wasn't. It's really sketchy like, now. It was dark and it was like right before it changed and it was like a little this, but it does that quick. Um, so yeah, I mean, a few days ago everything had been kind of like this and it was really easy to shell it. And now it just yeah. goes and then the water drops way down. I so gotta, I gotta do this. You have to show I her. Have you to have to this. show her. You always hear people say they find them, but do you actually see when they find them? Oh my god, I found my first full one like two weeks ago. This is my first. Yeah. That's his first one, yeah. Oh, congratulations! My baby joined the J Club today. Yeah. <laughs> no, and like right up here. And like, oh my god, I'm so happy for you guys. That, Wait, and the colors, a, mine are a little, little, it's like the same exact size probably, but like, no, who cares? Yeah. These colors you have are 10 times darker than mine. <laughs> So you can go just till you get to a place that goes like this and bumps out. This is the stilt house. This is the house that's on the, the four stilts and, and up above the water. Ooh. Every like two feet of sand washed out from behind their seawall. It's they're they're messed up. And there was a bunch of fossils that washed out of all this fill that was underneath. And then there's another place further up. And this guy's got the big seawall, and he's his seawall goes out like twice as far as this one. Between these two places, you used to be able to get a lot of good shells, but now all this approach is all rocks. So now stuff can't wash up and over. So gotcha. stuff's going that way. So Where this will boat. take you is from the boat, the broad view axis. Now pretend we're moving up long boat key a little farther. Okay. All right, way further up. This is the broad view axis. There's good parking there. It's like a walkway to get out and then like a flat spot. They did a bunch of renourishing there a couple of years ago. So from the broad view axis, if you go this way, a northwest flow should have piled stuff right here. Ooh. And that's what we had, northwest, northwest or southerly and then northwesterly flow. 
Is your phone able to? You know, huh? Is your yeah. phone able to drop pins when you're there? You it probably is, but I don't know how. Okay. <laughs> I'm an old lady. I'm 51. <laughs> I'm like not that tech savvy. No, you are not. <laughs> it's fat. It fills in the wrinkles. My mom. My, like, almost my mom's age, and like that's crazy. You look phenomenal. Well, thank you. Oh, wow. Did you find another one? No, I've got a. I gotta run. <laughs> I just wanna like do like uh, cartwheels for you guys. Just okay. what you find, honey? How, how often do you find these on the beach? Oh, paper figs, Atlantic fake snails, or paper figs, and a hinged little buttercup lucine. Oh, how pretty! Yeah, I'm gonna roll. You're doing well, babe. Well, we're gonna bounce the longboat, but yeah. we'll probably spend another 10 minutes here before we go. <laughs> 12 out of 10 today. We are uh -huh. freaking, I had a feeling. Have you made it to the rocks? And that's where it started when it was dark, and it was, good. it was like half that. So it's good. Yeah, a couple of days ago, that was insane. Oh, Everything yeah. was over there, and there was nothing on the bay it's side just, at all. Oh, it was so it's frustrating. It's just changing so much out here. Ooh. Oh, there's egg cockles out here, too. I found a few of those. What are they called? Egg cockles. Oh, I've always... Oh my god, I love how you say the names. Like, you say it in such a soft, cute way that, like, I remember. You know what I mean? Every time somebody tells me a name, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. I love, like, making videos of us finding stuff, and then I ID everything, and then I make jewelry out of it. I don't have anything on today because I'm all bundled up. But I make jewelry and shadow boxes and lights and I'm gonna you know, send stuff you, like that. I just started doing crafts with them, and I just started buying, like, spackle. It's, like, drywall mm -hmm. stuff, which, you, you know? Yeah. And I just splat it thick on a canvas, and then I just stick them all to it, and it dries. There and you it, go. It's so fun. Me and my friend just did it, like, two nights ago. I drill and cut and shape <gasps> and do a bunch of cool stuff. I know how to, like, resin, and that's it, but that's what I'm... That's all well, you should watch my channel because it'll show oh, you how to do that so stuff. Definitely. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna hang out. K? KK. KK. Oh my god. It's very nice to meet I you. I know. Literally, I had a feeling when you guys went by, like, we're both, like, I was like, I'm feeling it. I gotta give them the juju. And the juju. <laughs> we're on it. We're freaking on it. All right, remember Longboat, Broadview, head south, or if you park lower Gulf side past where that stuff is way down there's little beach accesses where you can park at the church and get across or different places like that but in right, from this way sarasota like the, right in your yep that's right south that sarasota yep. this was heading north up long boat toward coquina and Anna Maria. over the beach and it looks like there's no parking yeah this place loads of parking there's probably room for 15 broadway. 20 cars at broadway. Bro broadway or broad view one of the two i think broad view Probably, probably. Maybe text me both those names and I'll find you guys. <laughs> right on. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna go check out those. Well, happy shelling, enjoy. I'm gonna keep poking around here. Have a good time. <laughs> Ooh, there's a nice sailor's ear. Take that guy. So, this has been a holy cow wild day so far and I just I got a feeling about longboat today I don't know why my car almost went to longboat it was like I was on autopilot trying to go there first and John's like you missed your turn <laughs> <laughs> I did I had to turn around full easy boy oh boy there's a pile of stuff over here at the water's edge too Oh wow, look at that rough scallop. <gasps> That's a nice one. Beautiful. Really beautiful. There's a nice buttercup lucine there, really pale. And look at the size of the egg cockle at my feet. Man. Lido is not disappointing today at all. I see sand dollars all over the place. Look at this. Now, they're not in fabulous shape necessarily, but there's like stuff like this and then stuff like this, pieces of them all over, everywhere. I feel like I should go up higher, but I want to see by the water. There's another of the uh, smooth duck clams here. I like that. That's nice. 
witness the channel duck clam, which is known as a sailor's ear. And then look at this, a little baby's ear. Fantastic. Oh. Oh, there's another egg cockle. Oh, broken pear whelk. Oh wait, what is that? Is that an egg cockle? It looks like one, but it's got a lot of ridges in it that they don't normally have. This guy could be a fossil. I'll have to check the book. Here we have something a little unusual. That's from a little flat coil snail bear. And I saw another baby's ear up here. And I'm gonna grab that baby's ear. There's a pretty little baby's ear right here. And look at that. I think that's a shark vertebrae. How cool! All right, we have found some really amazing, super cool stuff here. And there's tons more to look at. Oh, it is immaculated. Look at the look at the color right there. That's uh -huh. immaculated one, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. Here, you want me to put it in the bag because I got more fragile stuff in here, or do you want it? No, it's fine. There's another baby's ear. Another baby's ear. Yeah, this little spot right here is good. Yeah, the paper pigs are amazing. Another baby's ear. There's a baby whelk. There's a baby's ear. John got another baby's ear. Yeah, so this little pile and with the seaweedy stuff. Ear. There's another one up there. Oh my gosh. What a good spot for those. A bubble. I saw him on the middle, yeah. I would almost be uh, expecting to find fragile macros in here too, honestly. There's an egg cockle in front of me. That's a nice one right there. And look at this. Wow. A little uh -oh. pear whelk. Another baby's ear. Another baby's ear. Are you kidding me? There's another one there. Here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Baby ear palooza. Yep. And there's a little button. A little button snail Bottom there. Freezer, well, lucky oh, for you, I have a long sleeve shirt you can throw on that's in the van, babe. I know. Another baby's ear. Oh, nice. And another. Nope. No, that's a slipper snail, I think. Look at the size of this bubble. That's a big one. That's a striate bubble. Oh, there's a baby's ear. Another one. <laughs> wow, we landed in the baby ear zone here somehow. That's great. My goodness. Oh, look. Here's another little piece of paper fig. Most of it's there, actually. A little small guy just missing part of this tip from the siphon. There's another one in front of me. Oh, my goodness. All right, so what is all this fragile stuff doing all piled up together like this? This is kind of wild. Oh look, it's a wolf snail. <gasps> hey! A what? That's a wolf snail. Okay. It's called a rosy wolf snail. Okay. Ooh, I don't have one of these only in fossil form, a Euglandina, a Euglandina truncata. So this is kind of nice to find this in and amongst with all this other cool stuff. Cool find, very cool find. First one of those for me. So, big day today. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh, another big baby. Another well. Oh my gosh. Huge baby zero. All right, I got to put this stuff in the bag. Hang on, honey. Huge. Hang on, honey. And you can see through that one. Ooh, nice babies here. Another here. little one. They're all over. Just in this one spot. Yeah. Golly. This is nuts. Oh, I'm really excited about that wolf snail. That's very cool. Unfortunately, there's another baby's ear. You've got to be kidding me with these. Holy smokes. A little broken egg cockle there. It does feel like the temperature's dropping. All right, well, babe, we better get you back to the van and bundled up. And there's a little paper fig and a bubble. And another baby's ear. <laughs> Gosh! There's a little tiny sailor's ear. So this is a fun little spot right in this little crook, in this kind of corner, where a bunch of this fragile stuff 
mixed all up with these really chopped up seagrass and and that's what we're finding all these fragile shells here oh nice piece of coral too that's a beauty look at that old perculum right in front of us we missed it completely yep we were so focused on other things there's a little tiny piece of a sponge that's cool all right so this little spot is really kicking it boy i'm telling you this is good neat 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 stuff all right for giggles i'm gonna go closer to the water oh wait though after i grab that beautiful beautiful paper fig that is a stunner take that plastic off the beach and a piece of true tulip which is most of it there is pretty cool Hey, Immaculated. Cool. There's a nice one. He's really brown. Wow. That's cool. And another. Gosh. An embarrassment of riches in the baby ear department over here. My goodness. Incredible. Big egg cockle over here right by me. And what appears to be a paper cockle too. That's a nice rare find. Don't get these guys very often. They're really fragile. They blend into everything. Paper cockles. And look at that antinomy. It's a coffee bean molympus. Oh, it's so tiny and cute. Oh, how sweet. Oh my God, I'm freezing, baby. And then there's a flat coil there. Gosh. It's a little crab, buddy. Oh my goodness. He's cute. He is cute. Calico crab, some kind. Look at that tiny little coffee bean lamp. Put my jacket on. Cute, cute, cute. I know we didn't expect the temperature was gonna drop. All right, honey, I want to just check by the water real quick. You're gonna stay up here and look for some more. I just want to go see what's by the water because we're finding an incredible amount of cool stuff over here, but. I know, we're going to go in a couple minutes, I promise. The size of that base scallop, that's ridiculous. Oh my gosh. More baby ears? Oh my gosh, this is the biggest one ever. And it's evacuated. Oh, hey. That is a beauty of immaculated. Look at that. Actually, he still has some of his periostrum on him, too. That's really cool, honey. Yeah. That's a nice one. I have two more egg cockles. Oh, gosh. Everywhere I put my foot down, something's breaking. I know. Look at that tulip behind me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. That's a lovely true tulip. He's missing a little bit of his back, but that's okay because he's pretty. Little egg cockles there. Cool. Oh, this is really, really nice. It was huge. My goodness. Oh, look. There's one of those horse muscles. That, oh, no, it's alive still. Oh, we're going back in the water. I love those southern horse muscles. Is that? It is an apple murex. A little discolored and yucky. Once he's bleached, he's going to be stunning. That's going to be great. Let's get this guy back to the water. Ooh, is that a scallop? What is that? Yeah, a little surf worn scallop. Isn't that pretty? Color pink jumped right out at me. All right, so this seems to be where all of this stuff is washing up at this little spot right here. Oh, a lightning whelk. Well, he's in rough shape. I'll leave that one here. You know it's rough if it's too rough for me to take it. I take home half of almost everything. <laughs> Look at this moon. Oh, that's a pretty one. Very nice. Wow, just wow right now. Okay, so yeah, here is the, the water's edge where all this stuff kind of floated up to. Oh gosh, there's all sorts of shells over here. 
And I thought a second ago I saw a brittle star. Ah, eh, maybe it was just a trick of the light. Here you go, muscle friend. Good gracious. Good gracious. Alright, so this guy, not an awesome shape, but that worm snail is really cool. And so is this little guy. And there's one of my fragile Mactras. I love these. Nice pair walk. Alright. All right, I don't want to keep John out here in the cold without getting him back to get warmed up and get another layer of clothes on since we are going to head out to Longboat as well. Seeing as we found so much wild stuff here. All right, we're cold. Let's go get hot chocolate and go to the next stop. Thank you so much, Lido Key, for another fun morning. Hall from Lido Key following Winter Storm Finn. I'm gonna go ahead and sort these out real quick. They already took a run through the bleach bath, got some of the nasty discoloration off of some of these shells. So let's go ahead and sort them real quick and see what we've got. from Lido Key. Let's talk about this haul for a minute, shall we? And identify some of these really cool things. Now, you didn't get to see all of these things get picked up, but you got to see most of them. All right, let's take a look at some of these little beauties and see what we have here. Let's start up here in the corner. You can see we have a lot of the little juvenile heart cockles that didn't get big. They stayed kind of small, so those are those heart cockles. They grow up to be beach bowls, but these guys didn't make it to that size, so we just flipped one off the table. But yeah, that's what these are, the, the beach bowls, the giant Atlantic cockles. And I just like them in this smaller size. I think they're beautiful. We've got some base scallops up here, quite a number of them. Just a smattering of calico scallops. I was trying to concentrate on picking up other things. Some beautiful yellow prickly cockles there, gorgeous. Nice hinged calico clam and some singles of that variety as well. We have a nice selection of fighting conks here. Oh gosh, look at this. The color on that guy. Now he's got a little stuff that I'm going to pick and poke off of him. But these guys have already run through the bleach. When I found this, it had a ton of that periostracum stuff. Now it just has just the littlest bit. And a run through the acid is probably just going to take that film off and make it a lot nicer. I love the patterns on that. That's a stunner. But we had some other really pretty ones too, including some little guys. This one I thought was super cute, and I'm just going to take and get all of those little barnacles off of there, and he's going to be beautiful. So yeah, nice little selection of fighting conks. There's some rough scallops right here. Those were great. Some lightning whelks and some pear whelks. Ooh, that's neither. Now this one looks horrendous. Remember what it looked like when we picked it up? It was kind of like this reddish brown color. It was kind of slimy and had some green stuff on it. It looked awful. Now just running through the bleach to get the algae and the stuff off of it, it looks a lot better. Wait till I take the Dremel to this thing and get all this crusty junk off of it. It's gonna look really great. We have some tulips over here 
including this little tiny true and a big true tulip. And this guy, I believe, is a true as well. Well, there's not as much of them there. And a couple of banded tulips, too. And some worm snails up there. And a pretty yellow crossbarred Venus. The southern horse mussels. Some really cool olives. Now, not all of them are in fabulous shape, but some of them are unbelievable in size. And look at this guy. Some of those that we find over there are just outrageously big. They're humongous. This is just super, super glossy, gorgeous. I think this was like that first one I picked up. It's really nice. A couple of dark seraphs and a common auger. There's some pear whelks there. Nice little collection of the paper figs, the Atlantic fig snail. We've been having a hard time finding these intact lately, so it was pretty nice to get a bunch of them that were actually in one piece. That was awesome. <clears throat> These are pieces of heart urchins. So we call them little sea biscuits or sea potatoes. And we ran that through the bleach to get the discoloration off. And I thought this one was kind of fascinating. Check that out. This is the little hairy spines that are actually on the animal when it's alive. Now, clearly it was broken and shattered when we found it. There was no way that we, you know, that it was alive when we found it but it hadn't been expired for very long if this stuff is still on it. So I thought that was a really cool find to just see what that looks like on there. All right, coming back up this direction here, really nice selection of the egg cockles. We're gonna talk about these in a second. And these cute little sand dollars, some sailor's ears, and the smooth duck clam, it's cousin. I love these, these are really neat. So these two are closely related. They're both actually duck clams, actually. This is the channel, and this is the smooth. Get a big surf clam back there. Some buttercup lucines, including this little beauty that was hinged. Got it open. That's this one here, and we also had a second one. This one here, a little bigger and a little brighter yellow. Really beautiful. Also had a hinge spiny jewel box, a piece of spiny jewel box there, a couple of sunray venus clams, this one has that awesome bevel hole in it from the moon snail, I thought that was amazing, and that, that bevel chamfered kind of edge to the hole is most of the time going to be your moon snails that do that. Got this cool piece of coral, and these two here as well, and then we have this. This, I am unsure of what this is. We thought maybe it was a piece of rib bone because it's clearly not really stone. Um, but after it got cleaned up, I see these little holes up here and I see things kind of going this way. And I'm wondering if this could be a really beat, 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 beat up fossil tooth of some sort. From a whale perhaps? Or from something else? So I'm going to have a couple of friends at the Fossil Club check that out in another couple months when we get up there to see them, and we'll see what's what with that. Now, going back to the egg cockles for a second, look at all those cute moon snails in front of them. Look at this. This is a beauty. That one is a stunner. Now, pick this up. I'm going to pick up a couple more. And we're just kind of going to talk about these for a second. Now you can see the difference with the shape, right? You can see that some of these are more round and some of them are longer. So this one here with all of those ridges, that discoloration and the, the difference in the shape in the back of it and it's narrow and it's got a bunch of ridges around the, the edge. This guy is a fossil. He is in the same family and, and the precursor basically to, to this one here. Now, these are your commons, your common egg cockles. See how they're fatter and not quite as stretched out? This one here, I believe, is the Pristis egg cockle. And these guys get a little bigger. And I've, I've in the past, especially at Sunset Beach, found some big ones. But that one, uh, I do believe, is the Pristis. And you know, we've got a couple of other big boys back here in the pile as well. But this one was pretty special. I liked that one. And I loved this one because he is kind of really different. 
You can see that there is a bit of similarity, but the ridging goes further up the shell on the fossilized version than it does on the modern version. See the ridges here stop about here, and they go up to here on this one here. So that, and then the thickness and weight of it, you can just tell it's old, it's uh, fossilized, mineralized, whatever. So, yep, fossil and modern. And they look pretty close to each other, actually. Now, speaking of weirdness, too, I want you to see this. This one had repaired itself. Something got after it, and it made a whole new part to the shelf, and it kept going, and it lived a long time after whatever this event was. So there's a little tiny ridge, and it almost looks like there's two shells sitting together, but it is, in fact, one shell with a very cool repair in the back. So that was sort of nifty, and I liked that. Put these little egg cockles back up here, and we'll keep going. There's a very nice operculum that we found just before we left. Got this beat up old whelk. I don't know if it's a fossil or a modern. It's in pretty rough shape. We only took it to throw it in the flower beds. The baby's ears. Oh my gosh. Can you even with these? These guys are amazing. Now, some of them, you heard us call them maculated. Maculated baby's ears are a little different than the regular ones. The regular ones have a tendency to be almost see-through. Like, see how you can see through that almost? And they're white. They don't really have much going on with them. They're white or they're translucent. Maculateds have color in them. See how that is not white? How that's actually brown over here at the top? And we had a couple that were like that. And then there were a couple others we thought were maculated, but once they ran through the bleach, they kind of turned white, so they weren't, in fact, maculated. But these three guys here are, we got the brown here in this one, we got the brown in the swirl going this way, and this guy here. And then just the littlest bit at the center and on this side for this one. So those were kind of a, a nice find, but all of them were. I mean, look at this. This is an insane amount of them. 26 total baby's ears from that one little spot on the beach where we were just there for just a few minutes toward the end. Absolutely incredible. Moving on, in the same area, we got these two shark vertebrae. I got this big one, and then John got this one, and they were a little grayish and discolored. When we got them, we ran them through the bleach, and they came out beautifully. I also found a really old beat-up alpha good cone. It's in <laughs> ragged shape, but it was a cone, so I picked it up. That beautiful little nutmeg from down on the end. Ah, oh, there's my parrots. The green and black parrots that fly around here are just squawking. I love those guys. So that's a cute little nutmeg. I like that. We have some striate bubbles here. These were two little ball sponges. They were about ye uh, yellowish, kind of orangish in color. And the bleach, of course, discolored them a little bit and kind of made them gray. So they aren't very pretty anymore. But if you don't bleach sponges, they will stink. Look at that lace murex. Ugh, it's a stunner. So pretty. That's a gorgeous one. Really nice. Some great button snails back there. A couple of really big ones. Those were cool too. And we also have this chestnut turban. And a few oysters had grown right here on the edge of it. And the snail kept growing. So it made this weird kind of in cut right there, which I thought was awesome. So I kept that. And a little teeny tiny murex and a couple of nicer bigger murexes. And I don't remember if you I uh, remember seeing this one. It was kind of red. It had oysters and junk all over it. Yeah. Run through the bleach bath. Took all that crap off. And the oysters just popped right off with my pick. Easy peasy. No problem. So let's talk about the fossils here for a second before we finish up. Now, this olive, I'm fairly certain, is fossilized. Because, see this right here? I don't usually see this on our modern ones. That's a lot of those little inner teeth like almost structures they're not teeth that's not at all what they are but but that's just kind of what you call them I'm gonna set that down and get one of these empty ones and you can see that the the older one has a lot more and like a ridge there where this is just more rounded so that guy he's kind of old these are as well these are a fossil predecessor to the crown conch 
They are actually really, really cool. This is Plyo Pleistocene era, so anywhere from maybe maybe a half a million to two and a half million years old, these guys. Pretty amazing. The spikes on the bottom are great on those. And then this guy here. I'm going to have to look this one up a little harder. I, I kind of want to say Dove Snail because it doesn't really resemble a juvenile fighting conch. It doesn't have the beading on it at all. I mean, even for a knobless, the, the, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't look like it. So I'm going to be digging through my book a little bit more to see if that's a dove snail or if it's something else. So all in all, we had a really nice bunch of finds from Lido Key. What a fantastic trip with the shelling. And of course, we still have one more to discuss. And here is John's Genonia. Look at that little beauty. I mean, he's almost perfect, missing it just a nick off the top of the tip there. And a teensy little bit here at the bottom. That thing is amazing. Very nice Genonia. So awesome. So we'll put, we've already had this one on the shelf in the living room with my other two. Now, <clears throat> there are two different kinds of Genonias. And most people are familiar with the main one, but they don't know a lot about this guy. There is also a type of a Genonia called a Kiner's Volute. Now, Genonias get their name from being Juno's Volute, okay? But this, the Kiner's, is just a little bit different. The Kiner's are a little more stretched out, a little thinner, and I'm just going to flip this upside down so you can see. See how that's like relatively straight? There's not like a real hook in it or anything like that. The kiner's hook. You go this way. So they're they're more stretched out and elongated with that hook at the end, so they're a narrower genomia. Now that one happens to have a lot of low oxygen sediment discoloration. It was fairly old, but hey, that's most of the J. You don't leave it at the beach. <laughs> so we just want to welcome this little beauty to the shelf family. Yay! Now before I pick all this stuff up and put it away, I am going to tell you that you're going to be seeing some of these guys again. <laughs> these, these guys, they're really crusty, messed up ones. Because these are going to be addressed in a cleaning video coming up soon. We're going to go ahead and take acid to that guy and get that haze off of there so we can see the true, true tulip. And then, of course, I want to get all these barnacles and all this yucky stuff off of that guy there. And off of that little guy there. So, you'll be visiting these shells again in the near future. And you'll be seeing some of these going into some crafty projects in the near future, too. Oh, I almost forgot this little guy. Jeez. The little rosy wolf snail. How awesome is that? It was also a really cool, really unusual find for us to find there at Lido. Another fantastic, amazing, awesome show. And I have to just say, I love it. I love the ex this drawn out shape of it. It's just beautiful. So that is the rosy wolf snail, which is also a really cool find for there. kidding me right now that was probably one of our best shelling trips we've taken in a little while right here in our own backyard absolutely fabulous john has been on cloud nine since he found that genonia i'm not even kidding you so but that, it wasn't just that we found so much other cool stuff all those babies ears and all. oh man what a run and it wasn't over because we weren't finished for the day, we're heading up to Longboat next. So make sure you tune back in for the Fin Find 5 series, part 2, Longboat Key, which is coming up soon. Thank you so much for joining us on this fantastic shelling adventure. Lots, and I mean loads more amazing shelling and hauls to come from this series. Look forward to you seeing you again. Stay tuned to the channel, and we'll see you again real soon. And remember, Get out there and go shelling.